Hey everyone, I'm Tamara Krinsky with the Red Carpet Report and we are here in Beverly Hills tonight at the 9th Annual Television Academy Honors. This special ceremony celebrates excellence in programming that brings important issues to the screen. Okay, thank you. He has a theory that guys named Mike beat up guys named Michael, so. Okay, so we're here with the showrunners of The Nick. Um, there's a theory that guys named Mike beat up guys named Michael. Are we going to see this in a storyline? <laughs> no, but I'm not going to go to a high school reunion now, thanks to putting that on there. <laughs> we can cut that off if you want. Fine. You know, he's a Michael, and so every once in a while people will give him a mic, and I'm, it always hits my ears just a little, a little oddly. So he's too polite to remind people that it's, it's Michael, so I'm not polite at all. I can tell that, clearly. Yes. Well, it's okay. I'm Tamara, and if people call me Tammy, I don't even respond, so I get it. I get it. Um, although, if, if you were Tammy Taylor from Friday Night Lights, that would be kind of be awesome. Oh, my God, that would be so awesome. That is one of my favorite shows. Yes, well, it's always good that I bring up other people's really good shows while we're on the red carpet for our own. Well, you guys are in the company of amazing shows tonight, but what was it like when you heard that you were being honored for The Nick? I think it was just gratitude. Uh, this journey has been so extraordinary. The ability to get to do the thing that you love to do, that you dreamed of doing, and then have people not only allow you to do it, but to celebrate what you were trying to do. Um, and there's, we are in an age of such extraordinary, incredible television that to even, to even be within 100 miles of a conversation like the uh, you know, Television Academy Honors is, is sort of just so humbling. So to actually be here to receive one is, I mean, I'm just really, really grateful. And a question for you about, um, about setting a show in the past that actually allows you to explore contemporary issues. As, as a writer, can you talk a little bit about that process and how that works? Well, yeah, there was never an intention to make it resonate today, but I think what it was is that by our whole motivation of the show was to tell the truth. And by telling the truth, we just see everything reflected back to us. And I think it was just, you know, it's just, it just says so much about how little has changed and, um, and how far we still have to go. You know, we can look back at it and be like, oh my God, that, you know, the times were so different, but not, not so much. Yeah, human beings, unfortunately, are perpetually human. And no matter how far we've come, it, it, it's always surprising how people don't evolve um, emotionally the way we wish they would. Well, luckily the emotional heartbeat of your show is Clive Owen. Can you tell me a little bit about how he came into the show? Was he in your minds from the very beginning? How did he, he end up? Um, I think actually very early on, Jack and I, just in our dreams, we, we had him in mind, never expecting him to sign on to the show, but... We um, separately dreamed of Clive Owen, which is, you know exactly what you think it is. I dream of Clive Owen quite often, so there you go. He's worthy of your dreams. He's a lovely guy. No, but I, I, I he just, he read the material and, and like uh, Steven Soderbergh, just fell in love with the time, the character, the journey that we were going to take, and um, he committed uh, a thousand percent. I mean, he's one of the most committed actors I think I've ever seen. He comes to the set every day incredibly prepared, and he and he makes the other actors have to live up to that and become as prepared as he does. And it was a joy working with him these last two seasons. And what's the, what would you say is the most surprising thing about working with Soderbergh? I don't know what the most surprising, I mean, he is, he's, an, he's endless in terms of his talent. I mean, he sets the bar so high and it's just every day you walk onto that set and it's incredibly humbling. But I would say the most surprising thing and the greatest thing is he's incredibly collaborative for a smart, and as talented as this guy is, he has no ego when he goes on the set. And it's just, we all were there to work every day, and a good idea was a good idea, whether it came from him, it came from us, it came from an actor, it came from a grip, it didn't matter. It was just to get the, the best product out, and that, it made going to work every day a joy. I have to say, I love the look of the show. Um, can you talk a little bit about the design process uh, and bringing that world to life? Um, one of the things that comes along with Steven Soderbergh and Greg Jacobs, our, our AD, is an amazing crew. And we had department heads who were extraordinary. So Howard Cummings was, in our, was a head of our art department, and he had an extraordinary group with Regina Graves. And, and then we had Ellen Mirajnik. And what happens is they become storytellers. When we first started this process, we were really the only ones who understood 1900 because we'd done months and months of research. 
So we'd written the pilot and we really understood this world. And by the time we started production, our departments, our, our prop guys, everybody knew this world so well that they were bringing infinitely more to the table than we ever could have dreamed. So we would research a surgical procedure to the nth degree and think, wow, that's an extraordinary amount of research. And then we'd realize, wow, we don't really know anything about the utensils that are supposed to be used in this. And you realize there's a whole group of, of men and women in the prop department who figured all that out. And you go, oh my God, you've taken everything we've asked and gone one step further. Our costumes are so breathtaking, and we do these massive scenes, so when we have 200 people, it's not like you have 200 people in jeans and t-shirts, you have 200 people dressed for a, a ball, and every dress has to be handmade, hand-fitted, all the hair has to be done, the makeup has to be done, the props have to be done. It is a massive undertaking, and we are the unbelievably lucky recipients of the talents of, of these people. And I think we stand on set just gobsmacked all the time. That actually brings something up. It brings up a fan question that came up on our Facebook page. Um, someone wanted to know, was, has there ever been anything you wanted to do on the show that you have not been able to do because of budgetary reasons, especially when you're talking about the period costumes and sets? Not in the world of Greg Jacobs and Steven Soderbergh. Um, every once in a while, you know, we get HBO and Cinemax have been so incredibly kind and generous to us. It is very rare that we don't get, of course we combine scenes and we move things around, but you know, aside from one far-fetched idea that we wanted to go to Coney Island, which was just crazy town. Uh, it, was, it was, I think that may have been us kind of. Just go to Coney Island, turn it into Coney Island 1900. Exactly, exactly. Can you redress Coney Island as 116 years ago? Thanks, um, and do it for a budget. But for us, everything has exceeded what we wanted. We said, oh, we'd like a cool kind of, you know, arcade. And it turns into this extraordinary set in one of our, in actually that we run through several of our episodes that Howard Cummings put together. So when sometimes we can't get exactly what we want, we end up with something better than we expected from what we originally wanted. So we're just lucky. Um, I, I wish I could say, oh, if only we could have gotten that, you know, that, that, that space capsule shot. But there really isn't anything. That's fantastic. It sounds like an amazingly collaborative process. Congratulations to you guys. Enjoy tonight. Thanks very much. Thank you. Does that have anything to do with Amy Schumer's Nick, uh, the Nick Jr. sketch? They sent it to me about, about what, um, um, yeah. Um, so, yeah, they sent me, the one of the exec producers, I know him, and, and he, Dan Powell, and he sent it to me. And he was very sweet about it. And he sort of was asking, is this okay? Um, which, of course, they'd never need to do that. But I'm, I think we're all such giant fans of the show. And we had all met uh, at the Peabody's. Um, and we had um, uh, sort of become friendly. And so they ran it by me. And they even asked me if I'd kind of run it up the ladder to Steven Soderbergh to see if he'd, you know, he'd helm it. Um, and Steven was very kind and said, if, you know, the person who's being, you know, the person who's being spoofed shouldn't be the one doing the spoofing. So... Uh, they are extraordinary, and I loved, I think we both... It was hilarious. It was, it was spot on, hilarious. I love that Jeremy Bob, who plays Barrow, actually got in, so into character, did the Barrow walk, and the, had, had the Barrow stand, and it was great. It was perfect. Yeah, the, they used a lot of our makeup people and a lot of our crew people. So one of the things, and obviously Jeremy and Bob from our show, so one of the things they did was they all took pictures, and they started sending them around internally to us at the Nick, and we were all, our, you know, we were just, I mean... You know, uh, you know, imitation is, is the sincerest form of flattery, and I can't imagine being flattered more than having a show that I absolutely worship want to send us up. You know, for a show that's on the darker side, your set sounds like a really fun place to be. It really was. It is. And, you know, a fish stinks from the head down, and when you have a really great group of people at the top, not, our, not us, I would say, you know, Michael Polair and Steven Soderbergh and Greg Jacobs really set the tone on set, obviously. The writing end of it is is us, but you know we are we're there to do a job that we all love, and we get to do the job part and not the drudgery part. And so, how could you not be happy? Makes total sense. Well, enjoy tonight. Thank you guys so much. so much. Hey, I'm Tamara Krinsky. Thanks so much for joining me tonight on the Red Carpet Report. If you enjoyed what you saw, click like, and we hope you'll subscribe. And in the comments, let me know what TV show means something to you.